Okay, in this video we will be covering an update on this area which may or may not be petrified biological um, material, uh, namely hair, like very large hairs. And uh, I finally found out where it is. It's Crowley Stone Lake in, or Crowley Lake, excuse me, in Bishop, California, or just outside of Bishop. And it's like a reservoir. So let's take a quick look here and then I'll, I have some comments I'd like to add. So just reacquainting you with the area, possible petrified stone hair, maybe not, blah, blah, blah. Here's a good look at it. Interest, very interesting look. And then we see all the, uh, the broken up pieces of it uh, lining the shore. And so here's the explanation of it. Uh, the pillars emerged after Crowley Lake Reservoir was completed in 1941. Uh, stone columns up to 20 feet tall. And many people have remarked it looks like, it has, aesthetically it looks like uh, Roman ruins um, or a Moorish temple. They had been buried until the reservoir's waves began carving out the softer material at the, uh, surrounding these columns. So that's some of the history. Then the conventional explanation is, oh actually I'm sorry I'll get to that in a minute, uh, 5,000 columns exist within a 2,000 or 2 to 3 square mile area east of the lake, uh, diverse in shape and size. Many are gray, straight as telephone poles and encircled with horizontal cracks about 12 inches apart. Some are reddish orange in color. Some are bent or tilting at the same angle. Still others are half buried and resemble the fossilized backbones of dinosaurs. So multiple different looks to these columns as we'll see. Uh, so here's the <clears throat> conventional explanation of uh, the formation of these. Uh, research researchers have now determined that the columns were created by cold water percolating down into and steam rising up out of hot volcanic ash spewed by a cataclysmic explosion 760,000 years ago. So hydrothermal convection <clears throat> uh, caused these uh, columns to form, apparently. Hot, hot water and cold water and uh, sudden temperature changes and big hot explosion. Uh, I mean, I could see that being the case, but uh, I, I, that's not my best guess in, in my opinion. So uh, we have stuff like this. I think a lot of the stacked portions that we see are mostly done by tourists uh, for the most part. Maybe this one is um, pre-existing before uh, humans started uh, reinvestigating this area, uh, but we see some of the uh, 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 segmenting, which could potentially be perceived as, you know, organic and biological looking, or organic and geological, like the conventional explanation, or mimic, mimicked either of those, or any number of things. Um, these, I was entertaining the idea that they look a bit like Roman columns, um, and again, some of them look different than others in this Crowley Lake area. So there's multiple different looks. And yeah, these look more architectural than some of the other ones. Um, doesn't mean they are, just uh, again, it could be petrified hair. Some interesting features. They're hollow, um, generally. Uh, so that's worth noting. Just one more look here, another good look here, and here we see one coming out of the cliff. Apparently this feature, and like maybe right here, is aligned with where a blood vessel would be. Um, could could be, I mean, could could be that, uh, could be mimic, blah, 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 blah. mimicked that, and it could be just coincidence etc etc but there's a look at that and here's a few diagrams of uh, different types of hair so I mean something like this or maybe this maybe this one might fit the bill or any number of uh, different types of animals so here's like a microscope image these are kind of resembling the segments so um, and hair uh, the appearance of hair will vary drastically from animal to animal. 
so who knows what type of animal this would would have been from if it's you know giant petrified hair but uh just one more look here possible well, i think this is see-through so you're not getting the segmentation but this is the exterior okay and a few more looks here um just trying to get a detailed look and here we go just pillars of stone whateverness and emerging from the hillside so presumably these uh, permeate the entire hillside for uh, who knows how far back into the landscape um, and here's oops here's one looking a little bit more like it has ridge like vertical ridge like components to it so that could be potent or could be consistent either with a hair maybe or with like the aesthetic of a Roman column apologies I always have at least one scroll foul in my videos um, one accidental scroll through the images okay notice here though that this isn't particularly hair like so uh, like right here and right here we're seeing like a flatter look and like some odd protrusions so it doesn't so in the event that this is all from a large creature, yeah, this could obviously be like other body parts or accompanying uh, tissue or some, something like that. Um, my best guess is that it's just artificial gibberish and we're seeing multiple variations on it, even though the wall itself may be uh, just artificial. And let's see anything else over here. See how it's not really looking like hair anymore. It's just kind of a little different. Okay. And then there's one area here where it's more like flat uh, fins rather than circular columns or some kind of weird combo there. So this is looking more like walls almost. Uh, like you see this almost like a wall emerging from the rock here. So this is the along the um, it leads me to believe that this area is similar to the false ruins we see with all kinds of gibberish uh, ruins uh, characteristics like fake columns and uh, fake walls and uh, windy walls and all the, all the weirdness we see with archaeological sites uh, I think is uh, explaining this geological area so my best guess is that the crowley lake area is not a biological creature um but rather artificial weirdness just derpy variations on uh patterns like one two three four here and then a nice continuous longer one here and it's very kind of randomized and haphazard um, uh, in a, uh, just a weird style. Um, this one pretty thin looking, this one very straight edge. So, uh, it's a lot to consider and reconcile. So I want to go over to, uh, this, uh, couple, Im couple more images in the Google Photos, um, feature and, uh, and then I'll show you a video of this area as well. So the again, these stacked things, my best guess is 90% certain that this would be like just modern tourists stacking rocks for fun for the most part. There's a chance that some of these are done by the artificial weirdness which made these weird columns. Um, who knows, really? So again, natural. Uh, like the geothermal thing or the hydrothermic con uh, convection from a large explosion or something. Perhaps. I mean, how, how could I go about ruling that out? I certainly cannot. Um, just 
the look of it. And it's reminding me too of uh, a little bit of the, the columns that stick out from the Ritz-Carlton in Half Moon Bay in California. Slightly similar, but those ones have like some metal poking out, so they're, they're not quite identical, but they could be, could be compared. I guess I should have picked up an image or thrown an image in, but uh, see the stacks protruding up and then I guess they just fall off. And then the other 360 photo, uh, over here we see that area with the fins, or the, the flatter features, there's uh, rows of, or columns of like walls almost, like very much like walls or fins of, uh, of rock, which is distinctly different from the, the column look to it. So, whatever you think is going on. And then one more look at this area, just poking out from the rock and all these little caves that, which have eroded from the, uh, the water, which apparently was introduced when the reservoir was created in 1941. So now I'll just uh, casually scroll through um, a few images here. I didn't want to do the whole screenshot thing. It's getting a little tedious. Um, but uh, if I see any that catch my eye here, I will point them out. Um, these almost like 1% suggestive right here, like these little marks of like uh, some type of column feature. Uh, there's the surface of these is very coarse. And here we may see some like vertical component going on, like grooves almost. Um, yeah, very coarse surface to these, almost like concrete, like a very rough asphalt or something. And the cave areas, and here's some more of the, the fins or the, the different uh, variations on it, kind of straight winding things. So it seems, it seems like it doesn't necessarily all add up, which is, here's some more fins, I guess, and the cave, cave-like areas, possible like, just derpy knob there, maybe, hard to say. Okay. Very interesting uh, cave look here. Yada yada, already got that one. And so here's these, the one with the possible vertical grooves and some of the flatter variations and the, the ridge along it, okay. and the many segments on the beach. Okay, hopefully I'm not boring you to death. I'll try and, okay, here's a good image of the uh, flat fins kind of from the side, like so you see right here, flattish look to the, um, so still retaining some of the look of the hair, but uh, maybe it's just multiple hairs kind of stuck together or col geothermal columns or whatever it is. Or maybe it's, you know, just artificial weirdness, just variations on the pattern. That's my best guess. Very good look at the texture here. And the archae or the scientist studying this herself in the, the video I'll show you, she herself mentions that it looks a lot like uh, Roman ruins from Turkey. Uh, I'm paraphrasing, but... She basically says it looks like Ro Roman columns from Turkish ruins or something like that. Uh, so there is that aspect to it, and I think I know why. Okay, so probably don't need to show much more of this. Um, this could be one of those arbitrary grooves. Yeah. 
maybe it's natural erosion. Okay. That's about it, I believe. Or about as much as I feel I need to show. Um, bear with me for a sec. I'm just going to see if anything catches my eye. Okay, so just a couple good looks at the texture. So kind of looking almost like paper mache. So the idea would be like very similar to columnar basalt or uh, any type of weird uh, geological striation that you might see. These are just like one, uh, one variation in the raw material used to, to craft the earth um, with the... Uh, with added mis or with deliberate mystery as one component or as one major objective, you know, bewilderment or whatever. So they made so the raw material or uh, or the what they did with the raw material, the patterns they made, these columns, um, they did it in such a way that it would be perplexing. So these are certainly perplexing. It, it induces almost like a storybook kind of enchanting feel to it. And uh, I think that's a result of just slapping weird, uh, incongruent things together in the same uh, package. Okay, interesting arch there. Could be natural erosion, but slightly odd look to it. And we can probably move on. Good look at some flat stuff there, flatter area. Okay, so if you just wanna look in more detail at these, just Google Crowley Lake stone columns. And actually this is a decent one. See, here's one that's like flatter could be multiple joined together or just a portion of the the rest of the rock. All right, you get the picture. All right, one last look at the flat ones. Okay, so let's go to the next tab here. It's this video of the scientist lady just doing a quick little one minute uh, um, intro to this area and uh, I'm gonna put my headphones on so I can see if she says anything I want to repeat volcanic features in the Bishop Tuff and she's pretty enchanted by it Uh, she notes that they're uh, fairly resistant to erosion. Like, why do these persist uh, despite fairly consistent and harsh erosion conditions? So she's curious about that. And, uh, sorry, microphone issues. Uh, and then, uh, so yeah, I, I would say it's because it's like artificial concrete type material. Just... Uh, oddly uh, configured into these weird deliberate mystery uh, shapes. This this one might be stacked by humans or by hikers or whatever, um, but it could also just be part of this whole mystery. It's it's hard to verify that. Yeah, she says it's, it reminds her a lot of something you would see in the Roman ruins of Turkey, is what, what she just said. So, yeah, like 5 or 10% column-like, uh, including some occasional vertical stripes, uh, reminiscent of vertical striping on, uh, or uh, grooves on Roman columns, and even the arches. Uh, some of that's obviously erosion, but some of the arching could potentially be uh, like 5% uh, Roman ruins like. So 
So she says we really don't understand why they're here and not very many other places. I think there's somewhat slightly uh, similar features in uh, New Mexico or something like that, if I remember correctly. And like like this, kind of over here, kind of remem uh, reminiscent uh, of um, messy walls, like old Roman walls and stuff, and like the weird mortar between them, even Egyptian stuff in some cases. So here we see the flatter areas in the background over there, or like the fins, and then the, the rounder ones up close. See, like little anomalies like this, like this very smooth part, could be like natural variation if this is uh, geological, it could be natural variation if this is biological, like giant hairs or whatever, like just a natural variation in the hair, or whatever it is, and then... Uh, it could also be um, just erosion or uh, in the uh, the shenanigans um, or uh, the grand deception argument. This would be like just one little derpy detail thrown into the mix just to make a mysterious mess. She uses the word magical, how it makes her feel, and uh, I think that's by design, again, combining, slapping uh, weird things together gives you, in weird ways, like combining high-tech with low-tech in a blender, or, or uh, with geological and biological features, perhaps, uh, putting it all in one algorithm blender, and you get something magical if you do it in the right way. Uh, so possible, almost like 10 or 15 percent like columns, like Roman column segments here, and possible derpy knob there. So my best guess is that this area is not biological, and that's, of course, just an opinion. Uh, take it for what it's worth. And... Um, Okay, one thing I want to touch on before I move on is how long have these areas been like this? Like, how long has the Earth been, uh, like, weird looking with the weird tracks and the, like, the weird vehicle tracks looking stuff and all the, the strange uh, grooves and patterns in stone and the big long lines and everything? Uh, so how, like, has, has it looked that way for thousands of years? I've even considered that it's only looked that way for, like, ten years, like, some type of uh, universe bleed through or uh, big, uh, like s either abrupt and or, or I guess or, so abrupt or slow continuous uh, reconfiguring of the surface over a couple years. Like what if the what if the stuff just like slowly emerged over the last hundred years, like slowly was phased into the Earth's surface configuration, like. Uh, as in, these stone columns were not there a hundred years ago, but then they were slowly phased in. <laughs> That's possible. I mean, uh, who the heck knows, you know? There's, there's so many things you can do with high technology, and it's like that, that, uh, that diode dynamic that you can see, where you can see in one direction, and it's obvious, but where you're looking from the other direction, it's almost impossible to see what's going on. So it's like, when we're on the, the sorry end of that dynamic, it's almost impossible to draw conclusions about how uh, the Earth's surface weirdness came to be uh, as it is, and like when that occurred and over how long of a time frame. So um, maybe I'll expound on that in the future, but I just wanted to bring it up. Okay, and then just for reference, I went ahead and just grabbed a couple images of uh, Roman ruins in Turkey, just like she said. So this is Aphrodisius, Turkey, and some, you see the columns that, first of all, the multiple styles, we have uh, the curving around the, the column, we have the vertical, 
We have this odd uh, stripe on the uh, column here. We have some areas that are not very eroded at all, some that are look like they're thousands of years old or more. Um, some derpy uh, lips and uh, strange contours in some cases. Um, so this image is fairly decent. So the uh, the diagonal slicing of columns, that's in my opinion a, a giveaway. Like sometimes it'll be like organic and like messy, but sometimes if you have, you'll see a very clean diagonal slice of the column, like it's just broken very cleanly, and um, that that to me is a giveaway that the column's not legit. Like that doesn't seem like a a legitimate damage pattern that would happen or that uh, someone would do um, when they were dismantling a site. You wouldn't, like if you're, uh, I mean, I guess you could uh, recycle the, the column for stone or whatever, but, um, okay, anyways, a couple other things I wanted to point out here, uh, like this little feature on that column and this, it's like, what the hell are those, you know what I mean? Like just random, like little plumbus features. Uh, so, um, and then this guy, uh, zoom in there, it's warped. Like, this is this is not a former segment of a column. This is just derpy, bleep, bleep, bleep. <laughs> you know what I mean? So this is uh, along the same theme or style or agenda of whatever might have created the, the Crowley Lake uh, giant stone columns or what we're calling giant petrified hairs, but I don't think they are. Uh, and then like stuff like this right here, it's like the top of the column is like all melty. And some people are going to say, oh, it's because this area was hit with like a, a beam weapon or something during a legitimate conflict. But I'm saying um, it's more likely that the, uh, the features are brought into being uh, with the warping as, uh, as part of the design. And a very strange uh, design at that. So let's just uh, move on to the next image. And I think nothing in particular, this one, just looking at the, like some columns are like three segments, some columns are one segment, some columns are, are smooth. So there's either multiple eras like of construction and reconstruction, or I think even that is staged, like the multiple phases of destruction. Uh, yeah, I guess construction and uh, destruction and reconstruction. I think that multiple phase dynamic is staged as well. So I think, um, uh, and not necessarily staged all at once, but um, it could be like a slow phasing in of, uh, or a swapping of parts that occurs through some uh, sophisticated process. Um, but yeah, we've got the, the windy columns or like the windy uh, grooves on the columns. We've got the straight grooves with uh, fairly uh, smooth and then the kind of derpy damage patterns. And so a column, oops, column like this, same side. We've got this one right here with um, some grooves and the grooves just kind of, what well, I don't know if they've eroded away or whatever, but um, it's like a fade in and fade out or just like partial feature. So that's more derp in my opinion. This is just pure derp. That doesn't look like organic erosion or uh, damage pattern to me. Like just the lumpiness of it. And then of course, right next to that, we have the precision. So that's the combining of uh, stuff that doesn't belong together into kind of a magical enchanting end result. This is an example of the slice column, same side, aphrodisius, turkey, and kind of the smooth slicing, and then I'll uh, combine with a lump here. It paints a fairly odd picture of how this piece came to be that way. Like, was it sliced for quarrying, or was it damaged, like just like a natural break? I, I guess I would lean towards natural break, um, <clears throat> but, uh, just because of the lumpy aspect, but I rather suspect that the the, the flat or flattish 
area here and the lumpy thing are just uh, two different types of derp or, or goof. And then the columns themselves got some weird uh, features, very rich, odd patterns. And I haven't done uh, the best job, I would say, in this particular video of breaking these columns down. That's something I intend to do in the future. Um, I'll do a much more in-depth analysis of uh, the columns and the potential explanation. Even like, sorry, this got distracted, but even these holes are just arbitrary derp. So keep stuff like that in mind. Then we have like one little portion of the wall or a smaller portion, which is like this pattern, the uh, squarish, squarish. And then the rest of the wall is like all sloppy kind of. And we've got weird uh, lumpy ridges everywhere and it's a, a shit show, and so the, the stone columns in Crowley Lake are, in my opinion, just more um, more shit show. And then to finish off here, we have uh, somewhere on the road to Bishop, or it's, this is near Bishop, near Crowley Lake, somewhere in the vicinity. We have these um, mud huts or mud brick houses, more or less, with this blank placard, <laughs> which I find interesting. Um, I think it's blank anyways looks blank uh, but uh, yeah so even ruins like this like more recent stuff I suspect of being staged and or rebranded in a very strange way um, or uh, m morphed at least so uh, a couple images here we have one one thing that's actually pretty common is uh, little areas where the brick is protruding like just randomly so that's something you see on the Aztec pyramids or um, Mayan pyramids, I'm not sure which, but some of the uh, South American or Central American pyramids have um, like a very rough protrusion of rock in this kind of similar style, um, which may be uh, a signature move or a uh, calling card or a giveaway or just uh, part of the derpy algorithm repeating uh, one method of construction. Um, so one more thing I want to point out here is these grooves. So are these natural um, uh, erosion grooves from hundreds or perhaps thousands of years of water erosion and or sandstorms or whatever else? Um, or if you uh, take that as part of the building style, how would you like build a, a nice smooth groove into um, uh, primitive rock structure uh, like like right here these grooves they're too like this one particularly crisp and then some of these more flowy or at least messy and then uh, but they're too like mm, fine fine like fine or uh, almost precision I know per Precise isn't quite the right word I'm looking for, but just, uh, yeah, like this big fat groove here, like some of them are thinner, some of them are wider, like this, and then uh, this is akin to these um, uh, just random grooves in uh, bogus architectural sites, I think, like especially Roman stuff and uh, uh, all kinds of stuff like so these grooves I'm saying are uh, are like a calling card or a giveaway or something like that just a, a phony feature uh, com in addition to the protruding bricks that and also these uh, deeper nonsensical uh, or uh, non-functional uh, holes um, or wider spots uh, in the event that these are not erosion, I think th this is um, this is all a more derp salad or phony ruins, in my opinion. So just since it's in the vicinity of Crowley Lake, I think that may give some context to uh, uh, to this area and uh, um, and to the origin of the the columns. 
And I did take a look in Google Earth at this general area. I didn't find a whole lot. And there's a couple long straight lines, like one big long 20 mile straight line extending from Bishop that I've showed before, um, which is at least 25 miles away from Crowley Lake. So I didn't want to include it, but. Um, and then some bumpy landscape, like some kind of knobby landscape, but nothing really jumped out at me. The surrounding landscape is kind of um, featureless somewhat, just kind of like dirt, dirt hills. So not a whole lot to look at in Google Earth with the, the Crowley Lake phenomenon. But um, yeah, I think that'll do it for this video. And in the next video, we'll take one more look at an area in Colorado with uh, uh, an eye for biology and the artificial weirdness argument as well. So uh, check that one out, please. And thank you for watching. Okay, thank you for watching.